Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is Keith Smith, and we're here to talk about an upcoming performance at the Hub. Welcome, Keith. It's always good to see you, Paige. Glad it's to have you here. great to see you. Thanks for inviting us down to Hudson yeah, to talk Hudson. to you. Yeah. Um, what play do you have coming up in the fall? Okay. Uh, it's a very iconic play, one that I've wanted to do for years and for various reasons have it, but it's To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, it's very interesting because right now, To Kill a Mockingbird is on a national tour. Not the show that we're doing, it's a brand new version. I'm gonna talk about that some in a minute. But in spite of the fact that it's a different show, still rights were very difficult to acquire. We're one of just a handful of theaters in the country that got rights to do this, so I'm very excited. I think the biggest thing when we do this show in mid-October, mm -hmm. and it's still a ways away, but we want people to save the dates and be aware it's coming up. But when we're doing this here in October, it's going to be the touring company is going to be on the West Coast in Oregon and Washington and California. So maybe that's why the distance allowed us to get to do it. But I'm, I'm very excited about getting to do it. And so you're doing the original version. Yes. Uh, the, the, you know, the novel, the Harper Lee right. novel that won the Pulitzer Prize. It came out in 1960 the iconic novel, and then the iconic movie with Gregory Peck came mm -hmm. out in 1962. Well, Christopher Sergal, whose father was the head of dramatic publishing, and then he took the reins there at about the same time. In 1970, he wrote the play version for this show. And dramatic publishing, whom the last two shows we did were, were cast through them, it's, um, or not cast through them, but they gave us the rights for mm -hmm. Cotton Patch Gospel and Welcome to Mitford. So they own rights to a lot of shows, but they've had the rights to this show since 1970, so over 50 years. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what happened. Harper Lee, who wrote the novel, passed away in 2016. She was 89 years old. And there's a Broadway and Hollywood producer, Aaron Sorkin, who people would recognize some of his work, but he wanted to do a brand new version of, of uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. So he went to the family estate and they were reticent and hesitant to give mm -hmm. it to him because they didn't know if he would honor the novel appropriately. So he started these lawsuits and Broadway started lawsuits and they tried to take rights away from dramatic publishing. It's very much high drama, in drama. Uh, so there were counter lawsuits filed, and there were trials going on in Alabama and New York and this is around 2015, 2016. Turns out everybody got what they wanted. He got to do the show on Broadway, his version that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And Dramatic Publishing still gets to give the rights to companies across the country, regional theater, community theater, to do the show. Uh, they're the only ones that can issue those rights. <clears throat> In fact, they got a $2.5 million settlement out of this because they were kind of thwarted for a little while. But So they're getting to do it. No one can do the Sorkin version except him. So he brought that to Broadway in 2019 with um, Jeff Daniels playing Atticus Finch and then Ed Harris, but then COVID shut down everything on Broadway. Well, now he started touring with his show with Richard Thomas as Atticus, who we all remember wow. being John Boy mm -hmm. Walton. He's 71 years old now that shows how things have aged. But I saw the show in Charlotte this past Friday night and it was a fine performance, but it's a whole different show than the original. <clears throat> and to my way of thinking, it doesn't remain as true to the novel as this original play because it sacrificed some of the aspects of the novel to get laughs, I thought. And again, it was a great show, but it's not the same show we're doing. But still, as I said, we were very blessed to get the rights. <clears throat> so that, that's all an interesting background. That is an interesting background. And a lot of times as a play goer, we don't think about all the background work you do about getting the rights mm -hmm. to, to do the play. And I mean, we do think about casting because we see somebody and they do a sure. great job and we mm -hmm. clap for them and, and cheer them on, but we don't think about that part. Well, over the years, I've been doing shows, you know, since 1977, and I've been directing shows since the late 80s, mm -hmm. mid to late 80s, and I've done directed about 80 or 90 now. When I've been applying for rights through various places, I've been very blessed and fortunate to get rights for most things, but I've been turned down a few times, as has everyone, because right. mostly because when shows are touring, they don't extend the rights. But there are also other reasons at various times that you, you can't get them. And I must be have the throb or my pulse on Broadway's pulse because uh, right after we did Sound of Music here, we it immediately we started touring and no one could do it. And right after we did Filler on the Roof here, like the next week it started a professional on, on Broadway and nobody could get rights for a while. 
and been trying to get rights to My Fair Lady, but it's currently on tour. Been try trying to get rights to 1776, the Revolutionary War mm -hmm. musical, and it's on tour, so rights are restricted. So I, th I think I'm looking for the right shows. Mm -hmm. It's just, but we, as I said, we were very blessed to get this, and I'm very excited about it. You're just talking about the variety of shows. How did you pick To Kill a Mockingbird? It's one I've had on my list for like 15 years that I wanted to do. I used to want to act in it. I don't really care about that now because I'll tell you about our Atticus I found who is more than adequate. It will be great. I'm very excited about that. But in the meantime, uh, it's, it's been on my list and things have come up. Another show became available we needed to do then or somebody else in the area mm -hmm. went ahead and did it right when I was thinking about doing it. So. It's just been on the back burner, and um, the, I'm really doing this in a lot of ways as a vehicle for Charlie Finkel, who we met before, had yes. on this show. Charlie, for those of you who are familiar with the Welcome to Mitford show, was Uncle Billy, and also was the devil and the angel in Cotton Patch Gospel. And uh, Charlie's a, a fine gentleman. Uh, I'll go through his stuff again. He, he majored in theater at Miami University went out west to try to make it in California, became a pilot, had a pretty horrific crash. He decided that to feed his family, he needed something more su substantive than acting. He thought it was great, but he didn't know that he could make a living at it. So he became a trial lawyer, and a very successful trial lawyer in Northern California. Well, he just was ready for a change of climate. He was retired, ready for a change in just every aspect of life. And so we had family in North Carolina. He came and moved to Taylorsville about three years ago now. And so it's always been his dream to do Atticus. But I approached him. He didn't approach me. But Charlie, being both a successful trial lawyer and being a trained actor, he brings both aspects of that, plus his excitement. He's already memorized the script. He's had the script and seen the movie and read the book and didn't want to base it on the movie, which I tell people not to go by the novel. But he's done all that. and he's. He's pretty well on the way to having his lines complete. We don't start rehearsals till August 22nd. And we're here so early because we just want people to save those dates. It's the middle of October, and we'll get the exact dates in a few minutes. But. And you told me before we started filming that you precast a lot, a lot of the folks in the show. Yes, and uh, we, we have that luxury here. We're not a community theater in the sense that people hold open auditions. Many times I do. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> most community theaters, direct directors, Kathy Stallings and others will tell you and forgive my allergies. <clears throat> I'm not sick, just to have a lot of drainage. But it's harder and harder to cast shows. It's harder and harder to get people to commit. So if you can find people who are willing, that's great. Uh, right now we have like 14 of the 20 roles in the show cast. Uh, we're still looking for Tom Robinson and Calpurnia, two of the African-American characters who are prominent and leads in the show. And I have some leads on them and some very good people, but just that hasn't come to fruition yet. Yeah, but that's one reason we're starting early, so we can do that. We start rehearsals in three weeks from yesterday from when we're taping, which are August 22nd. It is August 22nd. But the show itself runs October 13th, 14th, and 15th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, mid-October. And tickets will go on sale in a few weeks. But won't people go ahead and save those states? Because I believe with, uh, we do well anyway with having good audience attendance, but with, with the the name of this show being out there, I really think we're going to do very well on the chance to see it. But yeah, we, we have some very good, um, some of the regular people whom I work with, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Starnes and Jim Engelman and Kevin Parrish and uh, uh, Randy McCall and Carolyn Eichert and Ann uh, Wepner and Cynthia Haas and our young man who's become my go-to for a young character, Luke Perooch. Rooch, yeah, he's rhymes with pooch. I have to remember that. His mother told me that a long time ago. He's excellent and such a good kid, too. And then um, there's a girl, Maddie Wilson, who has played the Annie and Annie before. Mm -hmm. Not with me, but with Kathy Stallings. I uh, auditioned her. She's going to be a scout. I'm very excited about that. Kim Jordan the, was a principal in Catawba County, and she's done a couple shows with me here. She's going to be the grown-up scout, the narrator, Jean Louise Finch. So um, we're, we're still working on finalizing, but we've got a good jump on it. But you still got some time before you start we do. rehearsing. We do. So, mm -hmm. And as you called those names, I actually was going through my head. I'm like, very familiar, very familiar. And um, Mr. Finkel, when I met him and you started set, talking about Atticus, I was like, well, I know who's going to be Atticus. Yeah, well, it's just I, he has the look and the desire and the ability and all of that. So it's a, a great package. 
something he's wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It's like a bucket list thing for him. But uh, I, fail, I fail to mention Robert and Marsha. Marshall were in the show. Mm -hmm. They're two of my go-to people who sing in all our choirs and are so supportive. And uh, Kaylin Hall, a young lady who was in Bright Star, she's in Hickory mainly, but she's coming up to play um, Mayella Yule, uh, the kind of the, um, what am I trying to say? The antagonist, yeah. one of the antagonist yes. roles. But uh, I love working with her. She's great, so I'm excited. She played Scout, as a matter of fact, like six years ago, but now she's old enough to play the other character. I didn't want to leave anyone out that we had so far. But uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Keith, one thing I've learned working with you is there, there's always some surprises in the show. Mm -hmm. And you probably even have, may not have even figured out what those surprises are, but I know you always have something that's your twist on things. I figured out one thing, which I won't give away, Don't give that I want to do. But another thing, I, I want, the show's been done so many times, I've probably seen it eight or ten times, I mean, professionally and, and amateur productions from school to community to regional theater. And um, I want to put my spin and twist on That's one thing I hope that I have enough vision that I make things fresh and don't just copy what you've seen. And in the times in which we live, uh, it's very important to address how different cultures relate, how people with different political viewpoints relate. This show is set in Makeham, it's a fictional town, Makeham, Alabama in 1935. And it's in, so it's in the deep south, it's southern Alabama. and we will use the n-word in the show and it will make people uncomfortable and it should make people uncomfortable but it will be doing a disservice to take that away and not show the ugliness or the ignorance of that era and unfortunately some that we still have but you can't uh, you can't just um, sugarcoat things and and try to you know sanitize them you have to show things for how they are and, and this show that I saw the other version of it in Florida, in uh, Charlotte this past week, uh, they probably used the word five times more than this script did. Mm -hmm. And that's to make a point, but we'll do that, but we'll be very careful with how we handle that. On the other hand, I want to not make these African-American characters caricaturish. I don't want them to be one-dimensional, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. I want them to think and to show that they're thinking and that they were thinking then and how it takes courage to not you know, come to that edge, but not go over and lose control. I want to flesh them out more and make them more multidimensional. And uh, that's been a goal I've had for years, but especially now in the times in which we live. So I'm excited about that aspect of it. So, and, I, and I'll say this about the, the use of the N-word. Uh, when I directed the outdoor drama from this day forward, mm -hmm. uh, this, I did it a couple of years in, and I was in it many more years, but 2001 I was directing. People love babies and children and people love animals. So I've used animals in shows, horses and dogs and cats and goats and a couple of snakes at various times. But in that show, I used a, a, this big dog for the king and we were gonna get a horse. It didn't work out that summer. We had goats on stage. But I also put babies in the show. And my reason for doing that was twofold. People go, oh, that's wonderful. Well, if you know the story of the Waldenses, they were massacred by the French and the, mm -hmm. and the church of that time in the 1500s. In 1585, there was a great massacre. And they killed all Waldenses they could find, including babies. So I had this young man, Cliff Luman, in the show. He later did Best Christmas Patch and Never With Me several years later mm -hmm. in his, in his uh, bio. He wrote, I acted with Mr. Keith when I was zero. That's what he <laughs> so I loved it. But he's on stage and people are ooing and aahing and he's cooing. And there was another baby to it. I forget that one. It's been 21 years ago. And so he's in the first scene and he says, what well, if you cry? So that's good. People know he's there. But he was a happy baby. His mom took him home and had him in bed by the time the massacre scene rolled around, like the sixth or seventh scene of the show. And this baby, by this point, is a doll, but you've established in people's mm -hmm. mind this live baby. The soldier goes up cuckoos, plays with the baby, then just very non-emotionally, that's what's it, just takes his rifle and just kills it with the butt. And you hear an audible response. And this lady came up to me one night after the show, she said, why did you do that? She said, that made me feel sick at my stomach. I said, good, you should feel sick at your stomach when you're, when you're killing a baby or see a baby being killed. Mm -hmm. And you should feel uncomfortable and sick at your stomach if you hear that N word. That's the comparison mm -hmm. I make. So theater, entertainment is the main force, but then you've got the aspect of making people think and making people feel, and if you can do that, then that's that's wonderful. And this is a production that makes people think and makes people feel. Yes. I think that's one of the reasons so many of us 
read this book when we were in high school. Probably. And it was required by a lot of <clears throat> our teacher, Mrs. Pearson, uh, who taught at Hudson when I was there. She um, had us to read it, uh, and I think we read that, and Huckleberry Finn, and um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Those were the three aspects that dealt with African Americans that she had us to read. And, you know, I'm richer for having done that. And uh, it's, it's it, people, well, most of you do know because it's why it is, it's iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably one of the five most produced plays in the history of American theater. And of course, the movie before that was iconic and the novel before that. So, so again, it's, it's uh, subject material that should be very familiar to people. If you're not, definitely you want to see it. Yeah, I definitely want to check that, check it out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we come to Hub Productions and they're fun, we laugh. You know, it, it, this one's a little bit different in that, that it's, it's more about it making us think. It is, and it, it's a drama, but there are comedic aspects. Right. Uh, the character of Dill, Dill Harris, he's a great young man. He's, he stays with neighbors of, of the Finches uh, with his aunt and he's playing with Scout and Jim, uh, Scout's brother all the time, and uh, he's, his imagination runs wild. He's, he's making up all these stories about pirates and all this stuff all the time, so it's definitely. And uh, Harper Lee was childhood friends with Truman Capote, and Dill is based on Truman Capote, another author and playwright and, and novelist, but he, uh, he brings a lot of comic relief. And so it's not, it's not dire, it's, the, the, it's not dark like scary, even though there are moments that are right. scary. Uh, it's not dark in that they talk about mental illness, which they do, but, but it's mainly just drama. Mm -hmm. Like how is this trial going to go and you have this hope and yet you kind of know what the outcome's going to be and it's just very, very high drama. And, and I think people will, will buy into that and enjoy it. And will this be dinner theater? It is dinner theater. Uh, so we're back into dinner for the fall, and we haven't set everything up with catering yet or with right, the tickets, right. but we'll we're do that early. soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I'm going to say tickets are going to go on sale by early September at the latest, so less than a month from now, around a month from now. But just save those dates. But it will be dinner theater. Dinner's always served at 6.30 with the shows to follow at 7.30. It's always a Thursday, Friday, Saturday run. In this case, October 13th, 14th, 15th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And, uh, so, and tickets, we're still finalizing all that, but it's going to be a very reasonable price. And uh, we, you know, we, we're so happy to be back out. And you know, we've done, we did four shows this year mm -hmm. after being off for two years because of COVID. So we're very excited that we're continuing and we'll still be careful. But um, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's very rewarding and positive to get to go back to some semblance of normalcy. Keith, is there anything we've forgotten? I don't think so at this point. We'll get you guys to come down and talk to the cast probably. It's not, not as big a cast as when we did Cotton Patch when <laughs> Keegan came down, we looked at that, but uh, still a good size cast, around 20 and a few extras, a few townspeople. And um, as I said, there, like you asked there or mentioned, there are a few uh, surprises, which I think will be very positive. Uh, I will, I'll just give the hint that one of the young ladies in the show, I'm playing on one of her strengths which isn't necessarily in the show, but I'm going to incorporate it in there because it's just too good not to, so. So as always, you want to check out what's going on at the Hub. We say it over and over again with the arts, with the productions, everything is so wonderful. So be sure, mark your calendar for October. 13, 14, 15, 20, 21, and 22. Mark off one of those weekends and then in September, I'm sure you'll, you'll hear, you'll see something um, about tickets going on sale. So be sure to reserve your seats early. Thanks, that's right. And we appreciate everything you guys do for us. You've been so supportive over the years that it means a great deal to me. And people just need to come see live shows. You know, I, I say go anywhere, go everywhere you can to see concerts and shows. TV's great, you can go on online, go online and see things and all that's wonderful. But there's nothing like seeing a live show because it's a living entity every night. The Thursday night show will be different than the mm -hmm. Friday night show, and part of that will be by the contribution of the audience and the, the symbiosis of the exchanged energy. And part of it will be that somebody just says a line, one word tweaks it slightly differently, and it just goes in a different direction. You still have the overall structure, but it's free to roam within that, and that's what, that's what I look for in collaboration with the actors and living in the moment not calling it in or dialing it in, but living in that moment on stage. Raw energy, raw emotion, just live as you do it. And 
all the productions are always so wonderful. You feel better. You feel like you're part of a larger community. When that's you're right. To that's right. And, and that's that is a big part of the community aspect and the seeing it live. But uh, you know, my mantra I say every time I talk to you. Uh, I'm smart enough to surround myself with good people. Then I work really hard too, but uh, we have fun. And I won't do it if we can't have fun, but I, I think people will, enjoy may not be the right word, they'll respect and appreciate this. And, and they'll enjoy the performance, they'll be interested in it, but it, I think it will move them emotionally. I'm, I'm hoping for that. So definitely mark your calendar. Thank you, Keith, for let, inviting us down. And I look forward to talking to you more about To Kill a Mockingbird mm -hmm. and uh, meeting the cast. Yes. So we look forward to that, and thank you for watching Caldwell County today.